Exactly one year ago, I made a red, white, and blue corn bourbon. Let's find out how it tastes. I just said, yes, So if you don't remember, I'll put the link for the video up here where I actually made it. It's an 80% corn bourbon. Some red cornmeal, specifically Bloody Butcher. White cornmeal, I don't have an ear of corn for that. And we're gonna use some blue cornmeal. So we're doing the colors of the American flag, red, white, and blue corn, in the bourbon. You can't get more American than that. The white dog was delicious, but we aged it in a couple different ways. So I've got this one that uh, had a stave of charred white American oak. And this one still has a stave of Amberana wood. Amberana wood comes from Brazil and it smells like cookies. That's the only way I can describe it. It smells like cinnamon and graham cracker cookies. It's, it's just amazing stuff. So I got the wood for these jars from today's sponsor, Barrel Charwood Products. So if you haven't checked out Barrel Charwood, I'm gonna put a link down in the video description Ken is a really, really good guy. He has been sourcing and processing and toasting all the wood himself for years now. He's actually, he's really good at it and he's always branching out into new things. So if you need any wood for aging, cherry, apple, mulberry, oak, chestnut, all different kinds. He's got all these different types of wood and they come in different toast levels, different char levels. So definitely if you need some of those products, Check out the link down in the video description and also in the top comment. All right, so you'll notice that the oak jar has no wood in it. I took that out about six months ago. So it had been aging on the oak for six months, but I didn't want to overdo it. This one, I didn't pull the wood out and that's because I forgot about it. So we're gonna find out if 12 months is too long for Amberana wood. Now, here's the third thing, and this is not to compete with Ken because this is a completely different product. This is from 1030 Barrels. The whole container is steel, but you have this plug of charred white American oak, and it's press fit in there. There's no glue or anything holding this in. It's actually just dents out the steel. I've showed these before, uh, but just in case you missed them, what makes these different from aging in jars is the oxygen transfer. You get the oxygen transfer, it's slow, but also it's the surface area that makes a big difference. This does not age quickly. You can't do the fast aging process for your liquor with this kind of thing. It takes one to two to three years. That's just the nature of it. So the surface area of this one is gonna give you a much closer approximation to what you might get if you had a full 53 gallon barrel sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Uh, since none of us can do that, this is about as close as you're gonna come. This one and another brand called Bad Motivator Barrels, which these are based on. So this is one of the Bad Motivator Barrels, and it is much larger. This holds two gallons, this holds about one quart, or uh, one liter versus eight liters. My liquor fairy does not work in these volumes, so I'm still working on a project to fill this bad boy up. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna taste the difference between the two oaks, and then we're also gonna try out this Amberana and see if uh, I totally screwed the pooch by not taking that wood out. So, kinda wanna do that one first. Can you smell it? Mmm. Cinnamon. And a graham crackery but also i'm getting kind of a camphor kind of aroma so i think this one might have been sitting too long also drinking this at 56 percent abv uh because these have not been proofed down <coughs> let's try a little water the um the spice notes from the amberana are really good but there is a little bit of a note of camphor flavor in there and I think that's just from the resins in the wood that make those aromas so strong if you leave it sitting too long you're gonna end up with a problem I have several different jars of stuff that I left for too long sitting out in the garage with wood in it because I did my tasting video and then I freaking forgot about it and they sat out there and they've gotten over oaked so if you want to see me do a video where I find out what happens when you distill something that's over oaked, let me know.
down in the comments. So this is the red, white, and blue whiskey at 56% sitting in the 1030 barrel for one year. I'm sorry, that's not a year. I forgot when I put it in here. So the reason why it's still so light is because this went in here in uh, on the 14th of November of last year. So it has not been sitting for a full year. And that makes sense because this is just not even quite honey color. Fantastic aroma though. That's really good. You're getting some barrel candy, some of the corn. And this bloody butcher corn that we used in this one had a um, kind of a savory character and a buttery, almost salty character to it. And I'm picking up a little of that in here. So the characters that I wanted to keep in the whiskey, the, the interesting stuff that was in the white dog is still in here. So I'm really happy about that. It's incredibly mild on the oak, but there is some definite character coming in. Some vanilla, some spice, some tannin. Put a couple drops of water in here and see what it's actually supposed to taste like. A little caramelized sugar. Not really getting any dark fruits. Wow, just a touch of water smoothed the mouthfeel out even more. There's definitely some barrel candy in here, which I did not expect for something that's only been, that hasn't even been aged for a year. So what I want to do is taste this one more time um, next July and see how it comes along. And we'll, com we'll combine that with something else. Like I, uh, I wanted to make a red, white, and blue corn lager and I never got around to it, so. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. So real quickly, I just want to thank my Patreons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, all of these folks down here and anybody who's not listed. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your support and all of your feedback, helping me out on the channel to come up with new ideas and get new information about stuff that I've already done, but still had questions about. For instance, I just got a new patron two days ago and he, he had some really good insights on the shochu uh, video that I did. I did tons of research for that video and I didn't find that information anywhere. I'm grateful to you and everybody else who's on my Patreon team. Thank you guys so much. You are still keeping my lights on. Thank you. Now for the big boy. At least on the aroma, this is textbook bourbon. We get a couple drops of water in there. to open it up. Really gorgeous color. Oh my God. This has some of the dark fruits, plum. The corn is more subdued. I, don't, I do not like to toot my own horn, but this is one of the best bourbons I've ever had. So you know what we're gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to get a second opinion from Jesse. So look for that coming up at some point. He's gonna have to taste this and tell me whether or not I'm full of crap. Vanilla, caramel, a little bit of pepper. Fantastic oak character to it. Soft mouth feel. Dark sugars, but not too much. A little smoky and a little touch of like roasted corn. Man, that it's gonna be hard to keep around. Mm. I think this is one of the top five things I've ever made. It's really good. And in saying that, it was not aged in any special way. I just put the stick in there and closed it up and left it in the garage and I took it out six months later and then closed it back up and left it for another six months. So can you get good results with just aging in jars? Absolutely. Can you get good results with one of these? Absolutely. It just takes a lot longer. This is a two year commitment, whereas this is six months. 
So anyway, red, white, and blue corn whiskey, this is a win, and I cannot wait to find out what this is going to taste like next year. So I got to keep just enough of this so that I can compare the two one more time. I'm incredibly happy with the results. It's impossible to judge which one is better, because this one's done, and this one's like a baby. We'll do another t test in a year to see if, they, uh, if they're a little bit closer in their comparison. So if you are looking for a bourbon recipe, I'm gonna remind you again of the red, white, and blue bourbon. It was freaking delicious. So I hope some of you guys check that out and give it a try and then report back whether or not you enjoyed it, whether or not you had as much fun with it as I did. All right, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments section down below. If you enjoy brewing and distilling content, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so that you can get notified when I post new content. All right, happy 4th of July, everybody. Thanks for watching. Talk at you later.